Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Well, the third release of Solid Edge with synchronous technology is now out, so we're producing a series of video and blog posts to look at it in greater details. In the previous post, we look at its hybrid, history and history-free modeling environment. Now in this one, let's look at how it handles visualization, especially rendering. Now to save my breath, and your time. I'm going to refer to Solid Edge with Synchronous Technology 3 as SE with SD3 for the rest of this video. Let's take a look at the display modes available first. You have, of course, the usual hidden lines, shadows, ground plane shadows, and perspective views. But you also have these slightly different perspectives that imitate wide angle lens, 85mm, 35mm angle, and so on. By default, most CAD systems cheat you out of good visuals to give you better performance. By then I mean, if you zoom in close enough to the curvatures and the complex geometry, you'll find that it's drawn on your screen with a series of jagged straight lines. That's how it keeps the system display simple. It can allow you to rotate and tumble the model and get the results very quickly. In SC with SD3, you have the option to sharpen the level of details. Doing that gives you a better representation of the geometry, just like that. There is also the option to change the scene's lighting. And we're not talking about rendering yet, just the light in your modeling window. Okay, now let's move on to the real show, rendering. You'll find the rendering and animation environment under Tools menu. Once you're in there without doing anything at all, if you just want to quickly render a particular area of your model or your scene, you can just do a window select rectangle and this is the result you get. Now these are the rendering and setup options. You have your session materials and items, in other words, what's already there because they come over from your modeling window. Then you have predefined material. These are the new materials and environments and lights that you can drag and drop into your rendering scene. So with this, you can apply new colors or new materials and detach them if you don't want to keep them anymore. You can also set up your options so that SE with SD3 automatically re-render your window whenever you make a change in the scene or change in the color and so on. Now what you apply in your rendering session to your model are not going to affect, for example, what happens when you run stress analysis. The materials and colors applied here are only for you to create an aesthetic look. This is not to define how this product is going to be actually manufactured. It's important to keep that in mind. Moving on to the environment, you can add backdrop, surrounding, or base, either square or circular base areas. I've just added a base here. It's a square tiled floor, and if I need to adjust the floor size to be more in line with the dimension of my design, I can go in here and edit the dimension of the base to reconfigure it. By the same token, I can also add a predefined lighting environment to charge a somewhat shadowy scene with brightness. If it is not bright enough, I can edit that light's intensity here. The notion that CAD models created for engineering are strictly for production purpose is a limited way of looking at it. I think if you repackage that model into an aesthetically interesting image, you can extend the model's life into marketing, sales, new business proposal, 
bidding for new business and who knows where it'll take you. So try doing something, try doing some rendering and drag a few scenes of your own. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine wishing you and your family a happy Thanksgiving.